Last year, nearly half of all U.S. health workers reported they often feel burned out. That's according to a new federal study. Research suggests that nurses are especially vulnerable, and that can affect the care they provide. In collaboration with the Global Health Reporting Center, with support from the Pulitzer Center, Stephanie Sai reports from Columbus, Ohio, for our series, Critical Care, the Future of Nursing. It's a typical weeknight in Sarah Kincaid's home, rushing to find her daughter's soccer cleats. What sound does H mean? Keeping her four-year-old busy, releasing the family's herd of ducks. Hi, Lois. How are you today? Kincaid is also a full-time nurse in Columbus, Ohio, a 40-minute drive away. My patients know I celebrate with them when we hit milestones. They've made a change with their diet. They've quit smoking. We hoot and holler and we dance around. Which homework do you want to do first? But all that passion, along with obligations back at home and a lack of administrative support, can take a heavy emotional toll. Nurses are especially vulnerable because of because of the caring role we play. I was experiencing extreme levels of stress, anxiety, went on maternity leave. And during that time, I was like, I don't know that I want to go back. Research shows that nurses suffer disproportionately from mental health conditions. Even before the pandemic, the risk of suicide among female nurses was nearly twice the risk in the general population and 70% higher than among female physicians. Today, hospital nurses are much more likely to report burnout than their physician counterparts. At Ohio State University, Bern Melnick is sounding the alarm. She's a nurse herself and the first chief wellness officer of any U.S. university system. It is absolutely urgent. My studies have shown the more depressed and burnout you are, the more preventable medical errors that are made. So not only is it unhealthy for our population, but it adversely impacts healthcare quality and patient safety. Blood pressure control. Melnick says she's taking an evidence-based approach to creating a culture of wellness across Ohio State's hospitals and academic colleges. I have a philosophy in God we trust, but everybody else better bring data <laughs> to the table. You're a data person. Uh, absolutely. Okay, I like that. So nurses, for example, who believe their organization has a culture that invests in their well-being. There's much less burnout, much less depression and stress. A culture of wellness may sound intangible, but Melnick says it leads to real measurable benefits, over three times the return on investment at OSU. When is the best time to present that content and material? It must begin with our students. Self-care is a necessity, not a nicety. An urgent necessity. Nearly 18% of newly licensed registered nurses quit the profession within the first year. Another thing we talk a lot about is gratitude. Taylor Schwein is a psychiatric nurse practitioner in training. She teaches a cognitive skills building program for fellow OSU students called MindStrong. Kind of its benefits are backed up by 20 studies. We also measure levels of stress, anxiety, and depression with validated survey tools, and we consistently see that those three levels decrease after taking MindStrong. I could pull on, I could feel that sense of MindStrong pain. found Schwein's that. peer, Yang Du, at a critical juncture, questioning her success as a student nurse and struggling with what she calls passive suicidal thoughts. Just doing self-statement, really boost your self-esteem, right? You, you keep giving yourself the positive influence. Yeah, I'm good, I'm, I'm a good nurse, I'm caring, I'm making a difference. And that brings you, that reminds you of how great you are. There is an outsized need for support programs like this one. A national survey of 7,000 nurses earlier this year found two-thirds were not receiving any kind of mental health support. 
nurses, 24-7 schedules can be part of the problem. I remember working night shift and there were a lot of things that day shift would have access to, but night shift we didn't have those things. It has to be available for, um, to meet nurses where they are. Along with MindStrong, Ohio State offers a peer-to-peer -peer wellness counseling program. I talk about wellness, I talk to students about wellness. These things work. Mindfulness is evidence-based, really decreases stress and anxiety. Cognitive behavior skills building, and that is all about teaching people to catch, check, and change automatic unhelpful thoughts. Ohio State is also making some innovative new investments, including Golden Retriever Shiloh, one of 37 therapy dogs who visit Wexner Medical Center, not for patients, but clinicians. Yeah. One factor pushing nurses to the brink, the pressures of a profit-driven healthcare system. That amount of time we're spending to get to know the patient, developing a plan of care that is patient-centered, that should be valued financially more than the number of people who are coming through that office. Kincaid says less time to see more patients and high drug costs, among other industry profit incentives, can run counter to a nurse's most sacred duty. You have this moral obligation to assist patients in achieving their health and wellness. When you can't do that because of systems that are in place, that's where that distress comes from. That's where that frustration, that burnout, there's only so many times you can hit your head against a wall. Researchers call this feeling moral injury and find it can lead clinicians to depression and even post-traumatic stress disorder. Some stressors are hard to see, except for the people who deal with them every day. Ease of use issues with the electronic health record or EHR systems have also been linked to higher rates of burnout. Nationally, more than a third of nurses surveyed say they spend excessive time working on inputting stats in a computer, on breaks or after shifts. When you think about why people went into nursing, it's because they love people, but a lot of the joy in taking care of people has been taken away in large part because of many tasks that need to be done. If you find it's gonna be longer, let me know. Give me a call, shoot me my chart. While I think the conversation regarding wellness needs to continue, I think we need to go beyond just a conversation. We need to take care of our nurses. We need to take care of our health care providers. Taking care of nurses so they can take care of us. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Stephanie Sai in Ohio.